pray this morning on page four. All people who clap their hands and cry to God and shout to joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Sin you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. <clears throat> One day Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, Can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, Yes, she has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, Call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, This time next year you will be fondling a baby boy. The word of the Lord. Our song response, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever in heaven. You have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Bless the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. You are the splendor of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For to the Lord belongs our shield, and to the Holy One of Israel our King. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. <coughs> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning, Father. As we get ready for tomorrow to celebrate the 4th of July, our Independence Day. If you have an opportunity today, if not, please, tomorrow, say a prayer of thanksgiving and gratitude for the men and women who daily have served to protect us, to make our country free. And not only those currently in active or reserve duty, but let us remember those who have served and are retired and those who have lost their life in service for us. So please pray for all of them. We will continue today in our study of the Nicene Creed on the second article concerning Jesus, a belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week we looked at what the name Jesus meant, God saves. Today let us look at the title Christ. The word Christ comes from the Greek translation of the Hebrew for Messiah, which means anointed. And the name from Catechism, paragraph 436, the name proper to Jesus because he accomplished perfectly the divine mission that Christ 
signifies. Now, when it comes to anointing and something that is anointed, what I did in your bulletin handout, I gave you, and I won't read them all, but I did the research for you and put there the passages. If you read through the Old Testament, you can see how we have four main categories when it comes to anointing. An object which is anointed, and you can see that in the book of Exodus, chapter 29, verse 36, with the anointing of the altar. You can see where priests are anointed, also in Exodus, chapter 28, verse 41. Kings are anointed, 1 Samuel, chapter 10, verse 1, and prophets from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verse 16. These four main categories of anointing, what they meant was God had set an object aside or a person aside for a particular mission. And when God sets them aside, he imbues upon them his Holy Spirit, which helps them or assists them to accomplish the mission for which God set them apart. Think of it this way. When this church was established, the bishop himself came, and what did he do? He anointed the altar, this altar. So it could be set aside and blessed for the mission it was constructed. And what is that mission? For the Eucharistic sacrifice. So when we stop and we look at first anointing, we can see how things and people are set aside. But then if we take it to the term Messiah, we see how God speaks of his chosen anointed one who, per, who does a mission for God. He completes that task. Generally, we associate it with saving the people Israel. Now, we as Catholics, we think of Christ as the anointed Messiah. But that wasn't always necessarily the case. In Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 1, God speaks <laughs> of his anointed one, Cyrus. Cyrus. The king of Persia was a messiah. Why? Because he saved God's chosen people from their bondage in the land of Babylon. He freed them to return home. So if we use that as a jumping point, we can see that when Christ is in the New Testament, Luke's gospel, the angels proclaim him, to you this day is born Christ, a Savior. Christ comes not just particularly to, to save the people of Israel from a bondage from the Roman Empire as the time that he was alive, but to save God's people from a greater bondage, from sin. And we see that is is further emphasized by the name as we discussed last week in Jesus. God saves. God saves his people from sin by choosing his anointed one, his Messiah, his chosen vessel to accomplish this task. I, I wanted to read something to you. I found it was beautiful. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 4, 438 says, uh, concerning the anointing of Christ, the one who is, the one who anointed is the Father. The one who was anointed is the Son, 
And he was anointed with the Spirit who is the anointing. In Christ, in Jesus particularly, you see the fullness of all the anointings, priest, prophet, and king, all in that one person, Jesus. Now, I don't want to just stop there because there is a further continuation to the story. And that is the anointing that each one of us received when we were baptized. When we were baptized, after the priest poured the water upon our head and said, I baptize you, your name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, after your parents or godparents patted your head dry, the priest took the sacred chrism and he anointed you on the top of your head. With that chrism, you are anointed priest, prophet, and king. You partake of the mission of the Messiah as his ambassador and representative. You help perpetuate his mission, the mission of Jesus, to save God's people from sin. You do this through the way you live your life, what you do, what you say. This continues God's saving mission. For we well know that there are still many out there today, maybe even ourselves, who struggle and who need to see someone some ambassador of God present in the world. <coughs> Priests and nuns are in short number. They can only do so much. That is why we each, all of us, have <coughs> taken part in that mission through our own baptism. You are called everywhere to be that ambassador at your work in your home, wherever you may be, you are called by your baptism and anointing to be Christ's representative to all. May all of us be the best of ambassadors for Jesus. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for our profession of faith, our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God his prayers and needs. That our church have the courage to witness to Christ in every part of the world, no matter the obstacles, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the world leaders who value the lives of all the peoples whose lives have been entrusted to them, especially the poorest, most vulnerable, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of missionaries throughout the world as they work tirelessly to share the good news among all God's children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For safety from storms, floods, and other natural disasters of summer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may see an end to gun violence in our nation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions in our parish book, Kathy D Dixon, Keith Haddon, Marie Rupp, Sharon Peterson, Herbert Bohannon, Special Intentions, Frank Coates, Jackie Seals, Johnny O'Farrell, Joyce Lumpkin and family, all military, veterans, disabled veterans, cancer patients, the unemployed, and all of their families, Jack Kilpatrick and Evelyn Kilpatrick, Matt and Julie Tucker, Joe and Valerie Christiana, Doc Sanchez, Special Intention, Dana Graham, for the repose of the soul of Dot Odom, Tom Hayward, Cindy Powell. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts and for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for you, the parishioners of St. Thomas the Apostle and St. Bridget Parishes, for your needs, this Mass is being offered today. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude by asking Mary's intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God of
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our religion of all the Church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord. by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that ye should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us join in singing our communion hymn on page 86. I'm sorry, not sing, but say. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in me, his holy name.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Be God. Please be seated for our second collection. And as our ushers take up this collection, please consult your bulletin. There is an announcement from the Knights of Columbus concerning a silver rose that will be here. Now let us stand and pray our prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine phrases. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his name. 